Japan is the third largest economy in the world, and you might think that investing in Japanese real estate is a smart financial move, but I'm here to tell you that it can actually be quite dangerous. In this video, I'll explain with data why I, as a Japanese native living in Japan, choose not to invest in my home country's real estate market. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a better option than investing in Japanese real estate. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My mission is to help people grow their wealth while freeing their minds by achieving financial and personal freedom. If that's what you're after, be sure to subscribe and I hope you find this channel valuable. Now, let's get started. First, let me provide some background information on the Japanese real estate market. Japan has long been known for its high land prices and its stable, high-performing real estate market. But in the early 1990s, Japan experienced what is known as the lost decade, a period of economic stagnation that lasted for around 10 years. During this time, the Japanese real estate market experienced a massive bubble, which eventually burst, leaving many investors with massive losses. Now, you may be thinking, well, that was over 20 years ago things must be different now. Unfortunately, no. Despite the fact that Japan's economy has largely recovered since the last decade, the real estate market has not. In fact, land prices in Japan have been steadily declining since the early 1990s, with some experts estimating that they have fallen by as much as 70% since their peak in the late 1980s. So why is this happening? There are a few key factors that are contributing to this decline of the Japanese real estate market. The first is Japan's aging population. Japan has one of the oldest populations in the world, and this has led to a decrease in demand for housing. As people age, they tend to downsize their home, and they may also move to assisted living facilities or nursing homes. This means that there are fewer people in the market for large, expensive homes which can drive prices down. Low demand, high supply. The most concerning statistic by far, in my opinion, is the fact that Japan's population is projected to decline significantly in the coming decades. Japan's population has been on the decline since 2008, and it's a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. According to the National Institute of Population and Social Security Research, Japan's population is expected to decline from 126 million in 2019 to 88 million by 2065. This means that there will be fewer people in the market for housing, which can lead to further price declines. Additionally, the number of people aged 65 and older is expected to reach 38% of the total population by 2065, which could result in an increase in the number of vacant homes. Speaking of vacant homes in Japan, I just did a video on that, so be sure to check it out next. Another factor to consider is Japan's economy. While Japan's economy has largely recovered since the last decade, it has not been as robust as it was in the 1980s. Japan's economy is heavily dependent on exports, and as global trade has become more competitive, Japan has struggled to maintain its position as a major exporter. This has led to a decrease in demand for commercial real estate, which can also have a ripple effect on the residential market. Now let's talk about some specific statistics that illustrate the challenges facing the Japanese real estate market. According to data from Japan Real Estate Institute, land prices in Tokyo fell by 3.2% in 2020, making the fifth consecutive year of decline. In Osaka, land prices fell by 1.4% and in Nagoya they fell by 1.5%. Additionally, the number of vacant homes in Japan has been steadily increasing in recent years. According to the data from the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, there will be more than 10 million vacant homes in Japan in 2023, up from 8.2 million in 2013. How is this happening? This housing glut has been compounded by weak demand for existing homes. Older homes are less popular with home buyers because many do not meet earthquake and energy saving standards. One industry observer said that this is a result of the government and the housing industry prioritizing quantity over quality. In fact, 7 million of the 53.6 million occupied homes lacked sufficient strength against earthquakes as of 2018, according to a housing policy paper adopted by the cabinet in 2021. In addition, 34.5 million units that had cleared new earthquake standards failed to meet energy saving guidelines. Previously owned houses account for only 14% of the market in Japan compared to between 80% and 90% in the US. Unless their quality improves, the number of unoccupied houses will continue to increase. There are two ways to reduce the housing surplus in a time of failing population. One is to boost demand for existing homes, but it would be very hard to change the current market structure to one based on existing homes in Japan, knowing the Japanese culture. People in Japan tend to like owning new things, and that shows up in buying a home as well. The other solution is to promote the demolition of vacant houses. Owners of these vacant homes 
homes are often hesitant to demolish them because the property tax often increases when a residential lot becomes vacant. So the government needs to offer tax and other incentives to property owners if it wants to promote the demolition of vacant homes. Unless the government takes the lead in dealing with the housing surplus, the number of vacant homes that are just decaying away will only continue to grow. How about commercial real estate? According to a report by JLL, a real estate servicing firm, the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in a decrease in demand for office space, with many companies adopting remote work policies. This has led to a decrease in demand for commercial real estate and could have a ripple effect on the residential market as well. Also, the pandemic has resulted in a decrease in tourism, which has had an impact on the demand for short-term rentals such as Airbnb properties. Sure, tourism is picking up now that the borders are open, but if you think you can make big bucks with Airbnb in Japan, it's not going to be easy. In Japan, you can only rent out your short-term rental property for 180 days a year. Finally, it's important to note that investing in real estate in Japan can also be very challenging due to cultural and legal differences, especially if you don't understand the culture and language. For example, the process of buying and selling property in Japan can be quite complex, and there will be language barriers that can make it difficult for non-Japanese investors to navigate the market. All right, how is that for context on the Japanese real estate market? Those are some big red flags about investing in Japanese real estate. But perhaps the biggest reason why I don't invest in real estate in Japan is the lack of transparency in the market. In Japan, it is extremely challenging to get accurate information about a property's history, value, and potential. This makes it very difficult to make informed investment decisions, which can be risky and even dangerous. For example, in the US, we have websites like Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor.com that provide detailed information about properties on the market. You can find out pretty much everything from the price of the property to the taxes and how much you could potentially rent it out for based on the location, space and the number of bedrooms and bathrooms. I have yet to find anything like this in Japan. You would have to talk to a real estate agent to find out a lot of this information, which adds many layers to this process. There you have it. This is the long list of reasons why I don't invest in Japanese real estate, and you probably shouldn't either. Now let's talk about why I invest in the US instead. There are several reasons why I believe that the US real estate market is a better option for investors, especially if you live abroad. First of all, the US has a much larger and more diverse market. There are many different types of properties available, ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes and commercial buildings. This means that investors have many more options and can find properties that meet their specific needs and goals. Another advantage of investing in the US is the transparency of the market. And this is very important. Unlike Japan, the US has a very open and transparent real estate market. Investors can easily access information through websites like Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor.com about a property's history, value, and potential, which makes it easier to make informed investment decisions. Another advantage is that the US has a very investor-friendly legal system. In Japan, the legal system can be quite complex and difficult to navigate, especially for foreign investors. There's a language barrier as well. In the US, however, generally the legal system is designed to protect investors and ensure that the rights are upheld. The biggest reason why I invest in the US is the potential for higher returns. While the US real estate market can be volatile at times, it also has the potential to generate much higher returns than the Japanese market. This is due to a number of factors, including lower property costs, higher demand, and a more dynamic market overall. In this video, I reveal how much my entire rental portfolio in the US makes, so be sure to check it out. Of course, investing in the US does come with some risks, especially if you're living abroad. One of the biggest challenges is that distance and the need to rely on property management companies or local partners. It's important to do your own research and find reliable partners who can help you navigate the market and manage your properties effectively. I love my home country of Japan. It's clean, organized, and has four beautiful seasons. But I strongly believe that the US real estate market offers much better opportunities for investors living abroad. With a more diverse market, greater transparency, a more investor-friendly legal system, and the potential for higher returns, I'm pretty confident that the US market will continue to grow for the long haul. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about how to invest in the US real estate market from abroad, be sure to subscribe to this channel and watch this video next. See you in the next one.